Hi guys, welcome to some more Oasis goodness. Um, today I'm going to run through the first part, the kind of rhythm sections of cigarettes and alcohol. Basically it's up to about 3 minutes 17, I think it is in the song, um, where the solo kicks in. I'm going to do a separate video, or maybe two videos because it's such a long bit, on the solos. That's going to be the main focus of these, two, of these lessons, but I, f I figured I might as well do the rhythm parts first and then go into the solo afterwards and that kind of makes more sense contextually with the song. So, we'll, I'll try and go through this relatively quickly, play through the intro, uh, sorry, show you the intro, play through it, do the same with the verse, the pre-chorus and then the chorusy bit. Uh, and then that's all there really is, so it sh shouldn't be too long a video, so fingers crossed I won't mumble along too much. So let's crack on with the intro. This is probably the most iconic bit of the rhythm section. So there's a few different ways people have done this um, intro riff. It is quite hard to tell exactly because there's just a couple of different guitars doing kind of overdubby bits, but we'll try and go through what is the main guitar. So E power chord, second fret A string, open E string. I'm going to basically chug that. I'm going to palm mute. I'm going to play the A and the um, E strings to start with. Then I'm just going to play the E string. Ring finger down on the fourth fret. Then play that E string. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. And then, but then here I'm going to flatten my first finger down and play the second fret on the A and the D strings. Okay, and then I'm going to play that again. Back to fourth fret. Then back to that second fret twice. Open E and a, uh, open E string, second fret A string. Then I'm going to do the walk. Third fret E string, second fret E string, E power chord. And then we basically start again. And that's effectively that's the cycle of that first bit. So it's a very simple E blues style. But then we just have that second fret on the A and the D string that we leave ring out for for um, an extra half a beat that creates the kind of iconic sound and then that walk. So let me play through it really slowly. Okay, cool. So that's basically me playing it through really slowly. It sounds very strange that slow. So just as a little note, um, it's very hard to tell whether there's an extra E string in between when we're going to play this second fret on the A and the D string twice. We actually, so I've been playing it, but some places it's tabbed and some people teach it with an open E string, so it'd be like that. I mean, I, I think it's so hard to tell. I think do what feels right for you. Um, I've done both and they both sound cool. So whichever of those two things you prefer. So effectively, we go through that cycle. Um, three time, but on the third time we're going to change chord for that final chord and go to an F sharp major, so we'd go like this final time. So instead of going to the fourth fret as we have done before, we're just going to keep playing that second fret, okay? So normally we play two of them, we're actually, this time we're going to play five of, no, four of them, I can't count. And then we're going to go to an F, it's actually an F sharp power chord first, and then I'm going to get my middle finger down. So get those three down first, then my middle finger. So, well after that, I'm then going to strum the F sharp power chord. I'm basically going to do that effectively six times. And on that final uh, sixth one, I'm going to take my hand off. So all down strums I'm doing there, down, 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 like that. And then the really iconic bit of guitar here, we're going to play 12th fret on the B string, 13th fret on the G string, open E. I'm going to do four of those. Then I'm going to play nine on the G, 10 on the B, and then 11 on the G, 10 on the B, and open E both times. Then I'm going to go to an E power chord. You can just do the triad there, and again, I've seen it, people teach it like that, and I've seen people have it, um, tap, people, I've seen tabs with it there, I can't talk, tabs with it there, but I do always do it as an E uh, bar chord, just because I prefer how that sounds, and it means I don't have to be as accurate with my picking. So that's the really iconic bit, so... So from here, I'm then going to play open E string, then I'm going to play that E chord, then I'm going to do open E, two E chords, open E, E chord. So that's a bit of a faster bit. It's basically five, um, kind of five bits quickly. 
like that. Then a walk that we did before. Three, two, open. Back to that E. Another open E, and then the E bar chord. Then we're gonna do really, really interesting end. It's basically going between an E chord and an A chord using triads. First one is all the nines, nine on the D, the G, and the B. Then we're gonna place our middle finger down on 10 on the B, and then we're gonna be on 11 on the D. Back to nine, back to 10 and 11, then back to nine. I'm gonna slide away to nothing, aim for about four so we get the sound of a B chord, because it sounds cool. Like that. Okay, so I've gone through that about as quickly as I possibly can. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Let me play it through for you. I will go not at the test song tempo. I will go a bit slower than that, okay? So that's the intro. Now, I just should just realize I just didn't mention something. When I'm coming to the end of that um, first riff, I go three, two, E power chord. I actually let that E power chord ring out for the f um, first half a beat of the next bar. So I don't re-pick it. I let it ring out and I go straight just then to the open E string. So it's effectively the same um, riff, but obviously I'm just missing out that first half a beat. So I'm, I'm not playing on the one, but I'm playing on the and of one. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully it was easy to see in here. Um, but yeah, I just realized I didn't mention that. So I have now, and let's move on on that slightly confusing note to the verse. Very, very similar kind of feel here. Basically, I'm going to go through the verse, but in the song, they go through this twice in a row, just as I've done it, I'll do it once, but they do it twice. E power chord again. We're going to do two E power chords and stretch up for that C sharp note, fourth fret on the A string, and do that twice. Then in the second bar, I'm going to go same start, but then back to E, let it ring out for an extra half a beat, then two more, like that. Then I'm going to go to the F sharp chord, but I'm not going to bar it, I'm not going to hold it down, I'm going to let the E and the B strings ring out, and I'm gonna do a slightly different picking pattern. It's actually all still all gonna be downs, so I'm just gonna miss out one of the down strums. So I'm gonna go. It all downs, I say down, 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 pause. And then into this riff again, and we're gonna do this riff exactly the same. That's it, you just do that twice basically, that's the verse. So um, what you can also do, and, and you can definitely hear it more so I think on the second verse, is you can, rather than just strumming that um, F sharp chord, it's actually an F sharp seven add 11, rather than strumming that, you can actually arpeggio it. And all I'm really doing there is I'm playing basically a power chord to start with, and then I'm gonna just concentrate on those higher strings, the, the G, B, E, B, G, that kind of sound. And that's roughly what they're doing there, but obviously I would probably just ad-lib that um, on the second verse, but you could do it on the first verse. So just a little note there over that chord. They You could do an arpeggio instead of doing the strums. I'm gonna play it through with the strums now, um, but uh, yeah, feel free to, to add that in um, at your own leisure. So let's see if I can not mess this up too badly. Okay, pre-chorus now, after me playing the verse a bit iffily. So as I've said, as I said, I think twice in that, but how many times I've said it, do the verse twice. So I just played it through once, you do exactly the same thing again. Okay, love this pre-chorus, absolutely love this. So this is one minute seven into the song, according to my notes, and it also comes back around again, two minutes 44 into the song. And the line is, you could wait for a life to yine to spend your days in the sun shine. So it's the classic, it's the iconic bit of this song, Love, love, love this riff. So, so good. A power chord now, so open A string, second fret on the D and the G. I'm gonna give two of those down picks. 
Third fret on the A string with my middle finger. Give that a little curly bend, not a big bend. If I hit that, if I take it from a C to a C sharp, I'm pretty happy. Open A, and then another curl, then another open A. Then I'm gonna stretch up to the E, e string, third fret for another curl. Then I'm gonna to go to an E power chord. Let that ring for an extra half a bar, and then I'm gonna play on the E string, open three, four. Then, because my finger's already flattened down, I'm gonna play second fret on the D string, without having to move my um, finger. Open E, then I'm gonna give a little curl on the E string, then back to an A chord. And much like in that intro riff, the first time we play it through at one minute seven, and at 2.44, we do two A's at the start of the bar. Every subsequent time, we do one at the end of the previous bar, the and of four of the previous bar, and then we let that ring for half a beat extra, um, so, so a whole beat in total, and then we play on these, so at the and of four of the previous bar, and the and of one of the next one. So you end up with a very slight, like that. Rather than going, we go. Uh, hopefully again, that makes sense. I think that probably is just easier to hear than, uh, than actually have me explain it. So effectively we do that through, um, completely through uh, twice, isn't it? Yeah, completely through twice. And then in the third time, we don't go back to the A chord on that final beat, on, on the fourth beat of the bar. We actually um, have a slightly, yeah, it's actually the and of four, sorry, on the bar. We're actually gonna go to a D chord, but we'll deal with that in a sec. So let's just, uh, yeah, no, let's just deal with it now. So on that and of four, on the third time through, so the first two times exactly the same, the third time through, it's just the final half a beat where we'd normally play an A. We're gonna play a D sus two. What I'm gonna do first, I'm sorry, D sus two is basically a D chord without your middle finger on. I'm basically gonna strum from the A string so it becomes actually a D sus two slash A. And I'm gonna hit the A, the D, and the G strings there. Then gonna re, I'm gonna let those ring out basically, then re-pick the G. Then I'm gonna pick high E string, then B string, like that. And then I'm gonna pick that G string again. Then I'm gonna go into an A chord. And then, as that's the line is, you've gotta make it happen over that A chord. So, well, it's cause when it comes on top, got to make it happen and that's when we're going to go to what I'm going to call the chorus but it's not really a chorus it's just another bit that we're going to do separately so that's basically all the uh, that pre-chorus is that awesome riff almost three times and then that little uh, tiny different ending um, as we lead into the next section so again I'll play that bit through for you Okay, so now we've got the final bit that we're going to go through in this particular lesson. So basically, uh, the first time we do this, it's it's longer and extended, and then we go back and play that intro riff again. The second time we play it, it's a bit shorter, and we'll go into the solo basically. So we'll go through the section, and then I'll just explain as we go where those bits are, so you can also get the kind you get used to. Um, the structure of the song, that's what it's called. So effectively what we're playing over here, so what Bonehead's doing, playing a kind of E power chord, knowing him we probably play it up here. Well I'll play it down here because it sounds cooler. Then we're gonna do a D sus two, I'm gonna do that on the and of four, so it's gonna be an up strum. And then I'm gonna to move to an A, which is gonna be on the and of two, yeah. That's effectively the chord sequence through almost the whole thing. There are two extra chords, which I will mention later. Um, that's the kind of backing rhythm. Very, very hard to hear exactly the strumming pattern he's doing because there's a lot of distortion on. But when you see um, him doing it kind of live, he's very much just strumming down up, kind of almost just down up, down up, down up. Wait, down up, down up, down up, down. Then up on that D. And then up, down. And then up on the A. Up, up, down, up, and 
basically just going through that sequence. So if I just play that through a couple of times slowly, like slowly. Let's do the riff that's played over the top. Um, yeah, this is the bit that took me ages to really get to sound anything like the song, so hopefully it's about right. So, uh, yeah, let's just go through it. We're going to play open uh, E and B strings, then I'm going to play 7th fret on the G, and then I'm going to play those open strings again, so that's 7th fret on the G. So, I'm going to go, I'll move my guitar slightly, so hopefully it'll be easier to see. That's my first bit, so that's the two open high strings, 7th fret on the G, and then the two open high strings twice. Then I'm going to play 7 again, then I'm going to play open 7-6, so it's open um, E and B, and then I'm going to play open E and B and 6. So that's my riff. Like that. It's, when you play it through like that, it doesn't sound too bad. Oh, I'm getting, sorry, I'm getting a bit of reflection, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, yeah, when you pl play it through, it doesn't sound so bad, but it's, I don't know why it took me ages. Anyway, that's what the riff is. That's all that that little riff section is. And that's what's being played over the top of that E to D sus 2 to A move. So let me again just play that through a couple of times. We do that riff, and with it, the chord sequence. One, two, three, four times. Okay, so basically, yeah, that's exactly the same. Um, chord, the chord sequence and the riff are both two bars long, so eight bars in total, four times through, and this is the first time through. Then the uh, rhythm guitar is gonna go to a C add nine, and then a B seven and then back into the intro riff. I don't know why I said that so weirdly. So back into that intro riff. So that's all the, that's what Bonehead's basically doing. Four times through of, of E to D sus two to A, and then C add nine, let it ring, B seven, E, into the intro riff. And the, Guitar over the top is going to be playing 11th fret bend. We're going to bend it just a semitone to 12, back down again, then to 9, quite a slow bend as you can hear. Then 6 bend up to 4. I like to re pick the one, I think he does re pick it as well, but it's a slide back from 4 to 1 and then a re pick, I think. Like that is what I believe is going on. And so that's how we end that section the first time. So on that first time, we then go back and play the intro riff once. Let me count it because I haven't written this bit down because I'm silly. Once, twice, and then on the, yeah, so once, twice, and then we go into the. I think I missed out one of those, but you get the idea. And then we go back and do the verse again, and then we do the pre-chorus again, and then we do this chorusy bit. And on the second time of this chorusy bit, we only do that chord sequence and that riff three times. So we'd only, yeah, the the that that chord sequence and this riff, which are both two-bar sections. We only do all of those. Actually, no, we do do them four times, don't we? Because the way it's written in my book, we do it three times and it goes to the coda. We do it four times through and we don't do the C add nine to B seven bit. I changed my mind really quickly there. I'd written down my notes and then I actually read them, which really, really helped. So, hopefully not too long a video. Um, obviously there's lots of different sections, so it's not gonna be a two minute video. Um, yeah, so there's that's all of those rhythm sections. As I say, I am gonna do, the main thing I wanted to do with cigarettes and alcohol was do the solo at the end. Um, I will probably also um, do a live version of this relatively soon as well, especially whilst it's in my head, it hopefully will make my life easier. So, as that is the case, um, thank you for watching uh, thus far in our go through cigarettes and alcohol. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you found it useful. Um, 
I've seen lots of uh, videos, particularly for that intro riff, fewer for the rest of the song, so hopefully you guys will find that useful. As I say, the solos will be up um, probably next week. Um, if you're watching this in a few months' time, that won't make any difference. There'll be a link below, but yeah, it depends when you watch it. So yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you uh, could like the video, it genuinely, genuinely helps. And if you comment on the video, again, it helps. That's why people always ask you to do it. And if you uh, subscribe to the channel, again, it's, it's really cool, and I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys again soon for probably some more Oasis. Bye-bye.